Hey guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting right to episodes 31 and 32 of Twin Star Exorcist. Let's go ahead and get started with episode 31 in 3, 2, 1. Hold on. Let me do it again. In 3, 2, 1, go. There we go. For some weird reason, like my play button was not popping up. When did you get back there? Oh, <laughs> yeah, when did you guys get back there? Yeah, where's Benny O? Is everybody out for the day? Exactly, you guys were all the way. Hmm? Oh, I don't think that's Benny. Oh, yeah, that's Mida. That's Mida. <laughs> so hold up. You you kinda tell me now it's been maybe two, three weeks after the situation with say sacrificing herself. I mean, okay. H here's my thing. Even though we are only like now a minute into this episode, what I would have liked to see, which we did get to see last week, but I would have liked to see a continuation of it, is Benio and Roko being still oh like super upset over Sai, sacrificing herself and everything, and the fact that you know, hey, we have to be strong for her and such. But I don't think we're gonna get that. I mean, it would have been nice, like. Don't get me wrong, like, I think that would have been the best thing, because I, I really also like seeing characters being depressed in a way. I mean, because it's like, okay, you synthesize with them, you're seeing yourself in them, but I think because these two have already done it at the end of 30, we're not going to get a little bit more on it. But still, it would have been nice, because... Not only would they have had each other, they would have had everybody else who's been on this journey with them since the beginning of it. But, of course not, we're doing that. We're not doing that. Mm -mm. How they might even talk about her today, I mean... Hmm... Oh, okay, three days. Okay. And I'm guessing when he came back, super exhausted. And see, you can tell they're putting on a strong face in front of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Poor baby. No, 
I miss her too. It's only been a week. <sighs> it hurts. No. Oh my god. <sighs> All three of you are suffering over her. Don't miss her. Oh, okay, this has to be when they first. Oh, yeah, let's do it. Oh. No. Hmm. What if they didn't like each other at first? So, someone gonna make a move? Oh! <laughs> Anything? Come on, Benio. I know she's still, at that time, heartbroken over her parents. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I mean, at least he's trying. It's just, you know, Benny O needs to try. She has to make that first step, but because of the fact that she's so devastated. Oh my god. <laughs> she's still devastated over her parents.
Uh-oh. What's wrong? Oh. Poor baby. Oh, my heart. Mm-mm. This has to be the moment where they're finally going to bond. Mm -hmm. Well, at least you two get to bond over it, though. enough money? <laughs> they gotta be training at least or something. God, you know, compared to her, she looks so fucking tiny. It's not even funny. Oh! <laughs> the boy, boy. Well, this is their first official fight. Yeah, and he got some, got you some old hockey. He was nice enough because you felt bad. And he wanted to make you feel better. Because you care about her. You may not think you do, but you care for her.
Mm-hmm. It's okay. Yeah, you an idiot, but you didn't know. Mm-hmm. It's BS, and you know it, Kina Cole. No. No. No, I thought so too. Hmm? I hate the fact that y'all are showing this again. I don't need to cry over this child. Oh my god. She's the sky, the sun, everything. <laughs> mhm. She's everywhere.
Can I call? Benny will always need to. I almost wanted to spit my water out. <laughs> This was a really good episode. I mean, even though, yes, it was three days after Sai made the ultimate sacrifice, like, the fact that, number one, we got to see into Benio and Kinoko's past together and seeing that, yeah, at first, they were not the best duo because I'm thinking, like, I think ever since she came into the series that her and Kinoko were always like this. And to know that, yeah, in the beginning, it was not like that very interesting but the fact is that you know when these last few moments of this episode that these two could bond over missing Sai and Rokoro you know still growing up and being he, he's acting more like hella mature than he did in like the first few episodes of this show like he's so fucking mature it's not even funny I mean yeah even having the time of being with the say is good but just this little bit here also establishes that he's grown so much that, yeah, he's right. Sai is everywhere. She's the sun. She's the sky. She's possibly even the moon. She's everything um, around them. And that, you know, she still is here in some way, shape, or form. It's not physically, though, even though we would like to see a little kid walking around and then protecting her, like, every single week and everything. But... Yeah, I just love the fact that they all got to bond over that one last time to see wherever the hell the next part of this story is going to go. Let me guess, she's going to take over? Mm -hmm. And it's almost like you want that. Because something about that is very suspicious. But yeah, something about, you know, Arima's second in command now coming the head seems very suspicious to me. And I'm guessing we're, we're, we're not probably going to get the big, big answers in, in this next episode. But something tells me that this person here was working with the bad guys to, you know, either quote unquote kill Arima or make Arima disappear for a little while and then have everybody try to search for him and let his second in command be the head that he is. It's kind of almost like with what's currently happening in So I'm a Spider So What, um, Shun's sister Sue got controlled, killed their father, she screams and then every, and she says, oh hey Nisama, he did it, Shun did it. And so now he is a traitor. He's going to get treason and like that. And now he's currently running for his life, trying to find the truth. Because, of course, his brother was the one who truly killed his father or made his sister kill his father. Because he wants to be the rightful king. Because really the thing was, um, Shun was supposed to be not only the next hero, but the next king. And so, of course, yeah, it's always like... <laughs> What happens is someone's going to be pissed about someone else being in a higher power instead of them. Because usually when you think about it, um, especially in like a big family and whoever's going to be the next such and such, they usually do it by either bloodline 
or birth year so like if it was let's say for example it was like me and if i had um a little brother or a little sister or whatever if they didn't see the potential in me they could skip me and go on to someone else to let that child bo boy girl whoever let them be the next head i would possibly be pissed as hell off just as much as anybody else would and secretly try to plot my own way to make me the head of the right family. It's just not in the third. I don't know. I mean, because, like, whatever's going to happen next. Because, like, right now, like, I'm still considering Anima, like, missing in action. Not really so dead until we see a body um, and such. But he, you know, he could possibly be just, like, the last time we saw him, he was getting into... In this, I can't speak. <laughs> Uh, he was getting, um, he was sinking in that quicksand and such. So something kind of tells me he's just stuck there and he won't come back until like at least maybe episode 40 to the final few episodes by 50 or something. I'm not 100% sure, but like something about this number one does not feel right to me. And I don't know why, like the way he just came in and said, yeah, I'm going to be the new head. Yeah, you're looking kind of a little sus right now, in my opinion. But yeah, go ahead and pause the video and I'll see you guys in one second for episode 32. Alrighty, episode 32 in three, two, one, go. Okay, let's see what the fuck is going to happen in this audio search. Oh, is it okay for Sai? Or just for everyone else. Oh. Yeah. That's what it was. you guys <laughs> okay that was fucking cute like the fact is that she went with him to the dorm where everything happened up until now she didn't have to, but she wanted to. She wanted to pay her respects. Oh my god, that's so fucking sweet. Like, oh, if you have a significant other that does that for you, oh my god, like, psh, that's the one. I'm sorry, guy, girl, whoever, that is the one for you. And that's how, you know, they care about you 100% and they respect you and they care for you and they want to just be there for you and that's what a significant other is for someone whether it's a guy girl whoever be happy with who the fuck you're gonna be with for the rest of your life and it's just like oh my god that was just so fucking cute like jesus you gonna make me cry a minute in like god damn it <laughs> huh. i can't even move the stupid thing but the thing is now like what is he going to tell her hmm I have no clue. But yeah, um, Arima's second in command. Very suspicious still. Because something about that is not right with me. So, <laughs> best believe I'm be watching his eyes for the next few episodes. Hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, and now he's MIA. We just mm, don't know when the fuck he coming back. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Now, see, like the first few minutes of this, this now just seems like a recap episode. But even with the um the preview that we got for this, and we're seeing other ish, but it's still nice. I do like it when shows kind of do like a mini little half recap in the episode, and then still going with like the main plot of the show. I mean, because like <sighs> yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> um, with the Saints Magic Powers Omnipotent or Willy Wednesday when this comes out because it'll be Friday um, one person like and myself like immediately thought it was just going to be a recap episode and it wasn't Yes, but even if he is that OP, as everyone says, he could still possibly lose.
Yeah, I'm all the pasta that she meant. Mm-hmm. And including also your, your, you know, your ex brother. Even though we don't know where the hell he is currently as of right now, but you know he's got to be somewhere. You know, plotting on his return because you know we're we're almost done with this show. Excuse me. Um, uh, him too. Because we all know he has to come back before this series fucking ends. Because, look, <laughs> we're not even to the halfway point. Uh, what? T- yeah, we passed the halfway point already with this. But we have less than 20 episodes left before we're done with this show. It would be weird if Benio's ex-brother does not show up again and such. He's supposed to kind of be the final, final boss that... Not the extra boss, you know, in RPG. The final fucking boss. So it makes sense for him to show up one last time. And he's just waiting. Like I said, he's plotting, waiting his return. He might come back by episode 40. Yeah, you two need a break. You've literally been kind of on an extended vacation slash working, but you need to relax. You've been doing so much. You would think they would go sick in like a prosthetic arm or something, but maybe he was against it, possibly. No. 
seriously? Because you are something different. Well, no more break time. Ain't that the girl who looks like Junko? I know, because they got over it super fucking quickly. Because, I mean, if it was my opinion, I think, you know, be like one week, two week, three weeks at the most. Here with the thing in the back. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, they remind me of the ring girls and the wrestling matches coming around but like yeah, round such and such. <laughs> oh. 
And then mainly some guys get pissed off and they switch a guy for a girl. <laughs> if you know a guy for a girl, a girl for a guy. Because they're like, no, I want fan service. You ain't getting it. Oh. <laughs> you gotta love how many of wants to be the protective girlfriend. Oh, so freaking cute. Maybe you guys should just go. I never would have thought that this would fucking happen, but okay. <laughs> we still going? Damn. I mean, hold on, wait. But did that answer any questions, though? I mean, I, I, is she right? Like, you know, if you feel some type of way, then yeah, just dance. all that bad today. I honestly thought she was gonna like kill him like right after. But, yeah, interesting that, you know, Suzu comes in, you know, it says, hey, you should do this. You don't know what you need to do or not even need want to do next specifically. So, yeah, in the end, we just dance it out. <laughs> but to now know the truth also about Wokuro and that how him and Sai were similar in the beginning, but at the same time different, it, you got to feel bad for Wokuro. I, I was assuming that, you know, it was almost very similar with Benio. That when he was young, his parents also sacrificed himself, themselves, and he's always been alone as well. But the fact that Sigan found him there, it, it's nuts. I never would have thought, like, it would have been that. So, yeah, what exactly is Rokuro? I mean, okay, if we want to compare it to almost like any of the Sheldon Jump series from... Futures, well, past to the future, past, present, future, whatever. He does give me a lot of Ichigo vibes from Bleach. Or, okay, this is going to go into really big spoiler territory for the Thousand Year Blood War um, arc and everything and about what Ichigo truly is. So if you have not read it, you can go ahead and stop the video right now. Okay, so here we go. There's a point in time where the... <laughs> 
Ichigo, we've always assumed that he is just, um, you know, a Shinigami, somewhat of a hollow-ish like that, but we find out that in the final arc of the series is that Ichigo is a Quincy and such. And, and we all, and then we find out, I think, like, what, his mom was a Quincy as well. Um, and so going back to the moment where Ichigo's mom um, died, essentially, the guardian who was a part of his um, Zanbakuto is basically the bad guy. Um, I think his name was Yanwich or something, I think. Oh, God damn, it's been a while since I've read that whole arc. Um, and there was a point where I think he slept or he awoke and everybody's Quincy's powers just disappeared. So remember when Ichigo always thought it was his fault that his mother died. No, it was actually Yanwich's fault for taking away the Quincy's powers at a moment where the Quincy's needed it truly the most. And so when he, when Ichigo truly finds out that Yanwich is the reason why his mother is currently dead and it's like that, it, it's very traumatic and hurtful because you're like, you, you've been, if you've been with the series of Bleach for such a long time as myself, which I, for me it would be for anime, even though I didn't read the manga until that last arc because I really truly wanted to know what the fuck was going to happen next because I think it was maybe about like two or three years after the anime had ended and I knew the manga was still going and so I like binged it just to catch up with it and we we were still at like the start of the thousand year old blood war but um when that shit get animated whoa fuck <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say because like when when that like final fucking art gets animated a lot of ish is gonna go down but it, it's just like as i said if you've been with the series either with the manga from the get-go with the anime from the get-go and you see the one episode where ichigo becomes like he he's not at his most depressed moment i think it's in the um the full bringer arc where he is at his most depressed moment because he um he's slowly losing his powers he's not gonna be able to see rukia again but in that one episode or the span of one to two episodes of his family going to their um, mom's grave um not going to school and everything to be to have a family moment themselves that's like at that moment where he was at his most depressing self and that you were you you sympathized with him you felt sorry for him that this is happening to him and you're like i don't want him to feel this way again and then when he finally went against grand pressure didn't beat him but had a point where it was like he almost like did something and in the end it wasn't truly enough but it was like he still wanted to go out and kill him um to you know what is the damn word um not uh to uh, avenge avenge his mother and he didn't get to do that but then technically i don't know if this is filler or not because it's, uh, it, I, it has to be filler because i don't think they address this in the manga um Ichiko's dad and Uryu's mom, um, Uryu's mom, Ichiko's dad and Uryu's dad were the ones who killed Grand Fisher, um, in the, one of the filler episodes, so technically that was already, like, re uh, re um, you know, re getting the revenge for their, for his mom or his wife, and ish, but it, it's so much, and you just, like I said, not only do you feel bad for Ichiko, but you feel bad for Rokuro, because it's like, damn, what are you truly if you are human as you know we all say you are but you're able to heal and you're able to have these certain powers that it seems like no one else can have what are you then you have to be something else so i, I don't want to say he like well technically in a way he is part company but it's still it's it's a lot of unanswered questions with that specifically so i really hope and pray that by you know episode 33 to the end of this series we do get those answers because i don't want this show to be like okay here's all these questions that you've had on episode 32 and then we never get this answered even by the end of the fucking series so that that, that would really piss me the hell off and, and if we don't get that answer so hopes and prayers that we do get that answer because really if we you you just gave me a benio episode focusing on her we now need another rokuro episode like 
starting from the moment where Sergan met him up to the point where, you know, ish we already know about. But it would be nice, but yeah. Other than that, guys, that is my reaction view towards episodes 31 and 32 of Twin Star Exorcist. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single day. Join the Master Squad. And, of course, I will see you guys officially, y'all, next Thursday for everybody else. And next Friday for Patreons for episodes 33 and 34. Bye, guys.